Okay, so today I have some pre-provisioned infrastructure and I just want to show you how to do it. Uh, but first I just want to go through one white paper, just a couple of diagrams, uh, best practices for deploying HA on OCI. Um, so we would typically look at database high availability. Uh, so obviously we have our availability domains, but I don't want to go through any of that. Um, I'm sure you've seen plenty of that before. But I just want to show you just get to the correct diagram here now, apologies. Okay, so this is where I wanted to go. In this diagram, what we have here is we have a couple of subnets, six different subnets, uh, but what we actually, what I'm only really interested in here, we're not going to use VPN today, but we're going to use an internet gateway. We're going to have a bastion server in a public subnet. Uh, that can be an availability domain one or availability domain two or AD3, whichever you want really. Um, but this Bastion server, if you're going to go through the public internet, uh, you, you can connect that to a database in a private subnet. Um, obviously, Oracle supports Rack on, uh, on our cloud infrastructure and Active Data Guard. Um, but just looking at, if you're, if you're looking at a simple POC or just an exercise, this is something that you can do. Um, so I'm just going to get up my screen here now at the moment. Okay, so we're in the console now and I have some pre-provisioned infrastructure. Uh, what I have is a Linux Bastion server in a public subnet. I have three subnets altogether. I've actually reserved a public IP, which I'll show you. So that IP remains static um, when you start and stop the instance. And I'll go through some of the security lists that I have also set. But looking at the diagram, this is something that I have uh, set up according to that. You, get a, you can have as many uh, reserved IP addresses as you want. But looking at the database, so I have a database and a private subnet, and with a private database, there's no private, uh, no public IP apologies assigned to that. And as you can see in the bottom, I actually have a backup a database backup, 700 gig uh, of backup actually ongoing at the moment, and that will not, uh, so that backs up to object storage, and that will not uh, be successful because I have not added a NAT gateway or a service gateway and I, I'll bring you through them later on with the so you can see also my route table and my private security list uh, this is for my public uh, subnet so this is the security list that I have so I obviously was just messing around earlier on but what I'm going to show you now is if you're doing a small uh, demo I'm just going to take uh, my public IP I'm here at home at the moment just recording this and I'm going to add that to my security list. I'm going to replace the uh, 000. Uh, slash zero, uh, which marks the whole internet. I'm going to replace that with my public IP address and to allow that into my Bastion server in the public subnet. And I'm allowing everything out. So that's what I'm just going to do for this little demo that I'm just uh, per that I'm preparing for today. So I will be able to SSH in. I'll be able to send ping request uh, TCP on port 80 and 8080 and uh, HTTPS on 443 to the Bastion server. But if you can see here on my private security list, uh, I have nothing, no rule to allow anything to come in and nothing to go out which is uh, what I want because that's with the database a three tier architecture you would want your database hidden from the public so what I'm going to do now I'm just going to test those security lists that I have provisioned just to make sure that they're, they're, they're working and just to show you that I'm, uh, that I'm doing this live and show you how you can do it as well uh, so I'm just going to ping my, my bastion server yeah okay so ICMP traffic is allowed in so why don't we just try and SSH in now I'm just going to SSH in now uh, with my private key, uh, so I should be allowed in. Uh, just give me one second now. Uh, so it might be OPC, so OPC Oracle Public Cloud user is default user. I'm just going to paste in that Bastion IP address. Okay, so I'm in. Great. So what can we do from here? So if you just think about it logically, I've been in here already. Uh, really bad practice. I've put a private key on the server, but just for the demo, let's just show you how you can do this. So I am in my public subnet. Will I be able to uh, ping my private database server? I will not be able to do that because I have no security list uh, on my, uh, my private subnet to allow traffic in from anywhere. Uh, that can be from the public internet or from any network on Oracle Cloud infrastructure. Uh, 
it doesn't matter there's no if there's no security list list there you will not be able to get in but by the if they were all public subnets uh, all all subnets uh, in a virtual cloud network will be able to communicate with each other by default only if they're public and you can use the private ip addresses also so what i'm going to do now is before i attempt to ssh i'm just going to add a rule in that private security list just to show you um, that how you can control traffic in and out of your network infrastructure. So I'm just going to take the CIDR block of the, the public subnet of where the Bastion server is provisioned, and I'm going to allow traffic from that CIDR range into the private subnet. So to be able to allow traffic from uh, from the Bastion server into my database. So I'm just going to add ICMP traffic at the moment. So just to see if I can ping it, uh, just 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 uh, the basically an error protocol just to make sure it works. Okay, so that's working at the moment. So great, that's working. So ICMP traffic has been allowed in. So now let's add a rule for uh, TCP traffic. So the secure shell connection on port 22 from the Bastion into the database server so i'm just going to copy uh, that public subnet cider range to allow traffic from um, the reason i'm taking the cider range is if you want to create more bastion servers in the public subnet what i really should do is just allow traffic from the the public uh, bastion server ip address but i'm just going to use the cider range so i've sshed in so i'm able to get in so what can i do now will i be able to um talk to the outside world from that private database uh, the answer is i won't because there is no security list to allow traffic out but also i have not added a nat gateway a network address gateway or a or nat instance while well, typically cloud providers like aws oracle and azure uh, we used to always use uh, nat instances so any internet connection that is uh, the, from the private subnet that is sent to the internet. It's allowed, to, so the internet, the request is allowed to leave the private subnet, but any request initiated from the outside world would not be allowed in. And typically you would use that, you would use a NAT instance to do that. Um, so you would send the traffic from the private subnet to the NAT instance, and that NAT instance would, would live in the public subnet. But now we use our NAT gateways. So these ga these are gateways managed by cloud providers and they're more highly available than a NAT instance and you don't have to manage them. So I do have a NAT instance, but I don't have it attached to the network. And so let's delete that and create a new one. So just deleted that NAT gateway, we're going to create a new one. Uh, let's just call it private uh, NAT network address translation. Uh, so we're also going to have to create the route uh, so for every all outbound traffic from the pri from the private uh, route table, it will all it will all we'll we'll point it all of that traffic to uh, the NAT gateway that we've just created, uh, and we will also look at the service gateway for object storage now uh, shortly just after this. So I just want to add this and see uh, will it work. So just add it there. Uh, they typically uh, update straight away, so let's just try it now. Uh, we we'll ping the Google name server. Okay, so that's been allowed in. Um, so what we'll do now is we're just going to go back to my other screen. Uh, let's just try a curl command there, and we'll see what we can do. The traffic is also allowed out through the NAT gateway and to come back in. So I'm just going to curl. Uh, so a curl request is just a way to test some APIs. Okay, so great, um, TCP traffic. Looking at the most common reason you would need to allow traffic out from a private subnet, I'm just going to try download the Oracle Database 18 software. So you see here, I do get a response, but I just need to authorize with my username and password. Uh, but why would you allow traffic out to get security patches and updates? It's really, really important. If there is a security patch and you need to get it onto your software in a private subnet we are covered with tcp and http traffic but what we really need to look at now is our database backups so you can see here i have a backup in progress it's 752 gigabytes and i've been automatically backing it up but why is it failing 
it's failing because there is no route to my object storage. I have added no way for my database to access object storage. What we can do is we can use a NAT gateway and go to an internet gateway, but what we need to do is add a new feature called service gateways. So service gateways are, are uh, ways for basically ports and protocols in OCI to communicate with each other. So I can let my database communicate with my object storage. And all, as always, what's really helpful, it's managed by Oracle. So we are responsible for the high, high availability and the, the upkeep of that gateway. So I'm going to add that service gateway. It's provisioned. But as everything with uh, computer networking, you have to define the routes. So what I'm going to do now is add the destination of my, ser my service gateway. Uh, apologies. So I have my appropriate route rules here. So I'm just going to save that. Uh, what I also want to do here is look at uh, something else, is how we access the database. Uh, about this topic is how do I... Are you going to interact with your private database with the tools that you're familiar with, whether that be SQL Plus, SQL Net, or SQL Developer? I'm going to go through SQL Developer here now, uh, through SSH, very similar to PuTTY e or the SSH protocol that we've been using at the moment. You can also do that in SQL Developer. Uh, so you can connect to the Bastion server in SQL Developer and port forward. Uh, to the private database and as as we've done in this tutorial we've already added the security list and network uh, routes so you can download sql developer for free uh, i already have it on my desktop so i'm just going to pull it up now shortly but this is a really cool really cool feature feature of sql developer and this is why i was I would always have my database in a private subnet because you can easily connect to it with the tools Okay, so now let's configure our SSH tunnel. Uh, name, we can put in anything. So it's going to put in Bastion here. Host is the host name, the public IP of your Bastion server, which you can lock down to um, to, to your on-premise infrastructure. So only you can get in. Uh, username, default, OPC, and private key file is the file, uh, in this case, putty that we used at the start of the session. So we're just going to get that there. Okay, cool, got it. Uh, local port forward, so we're just going to go to the private IP of the database um, because we have, in our private subnet, we have allowed in the security list to accept traffic from the public subnet. Uh, so that's inter-network uh, connectivity uh, and on port 1521, so let's just test it now, so hopefully it will work. Yeah, I'll just make it a bit bigger so we can see. Okay, so test this. Okay, so connected successfully to the bastion, and now we'll just test the port forward uh, to the private IP and just hit connect. So it doesn't automatically give you a success message, but we can see here it's connected. So now you, we have the option to uh, configure the actual database connection uh, and using our SSH tunnel. So I just had one pre-created here, so I just clear everything and start again. Connection name, you can put in anything, just say dbpoc. Uh, username, we can use admin or sys. I like to use sys just to have the full privileges. So sysdba and so username sys, and we're going to go with the role sysdba. And I'm, if you can see in my connection type, I'm using ssh, and I'm going to use that tunnel that I created earlier on. And the password is the password that we created at the start in the console for your database, so I always have a, uh, make a note of that. Uh, SID is the name of the actual database, so even with Oracle Database Cloud Service, uh, a high performance edition, enterprise edition, high performance, you can have multiple pluggable databases. Um, so just make sure that you have the right name of your database. And we can see here a status of success. You can get some errors here now and then with with the listener and connectivity issues so if you do have errors just give me a shout and we can go through it um, I did get some errors in my previous uh, tutorial about this so as you can see I'm connected to my database so when we're connecting to an Oracle database in the cloud it's always the same connectivity that you use on-premise so that can be SQL plus SQL net SQL developer anything like that um, so we can see here that there's just some tables and stuff that have been configured so I have been messing around with this database. I'm actually hosting an application on top of it. Uh, so that's why there are some pre-built tables here. 
and then you always you can always go through your data modeler uh, database export this is one that I like to do uh, just to have a backup of that uh, I'm actually going to see if my backup is working so I added the service gateway in the console to allow the Oracle cloud to to, to communicate with object storage without traversing the public internet. So I'm going to have a look back in my console now to make sure that was working. It's, it's, it's something that um, c can catch people out at times. Sometimes we think that we can just add a NAT get a gateway and our database backup will work. But no, you, you can do that, but it's a bit more tricky. Oracle have given the service gateway look so we can see our, our database is being backed up successfully, even if we look at the time here on Thursday uh, and Wednesday, I didn't have the service gateway provisioned. Uh, but the beauty about the backup is you can instantiate a database from the backup, really, really good. Um, so I don't want to use an existing, I want to create a new database. Every, brilliant for test and development, so we can pick our shapes and then we can also go with the options. So really, really helpful. And just to finish off, the, where I always refer back to is the technical white papers on Oracle Cloud Infrastructure. And this is where you will get the most information and most up-to-date and information around security and architecture. Uh, just going into the networking uh, deployment guide, I'm just going to show down to look at something that we went through in that tutorial. Um, so obviously, you don't have to worry about VPN and IPsec for this tutorial and Fast Connect, I would always recommend Fast Connect if you are going to be using our cloud infrastructure. But you can see here we have our NAT gateway for instances in our in our private subnets to initiate contact with the outside world and also we have our service gateway to talk to our Oracle services network which is, which has object storage and more is being added to that list. So that's how we we just went through that today. And then you also have Fast Connect public peering and also Fast Connect private peering if you want to extend your data center through a dedicated line from a network provider. So I hope that all made sense and I'll see you, see you soon. Thanks very much.